विद्यार्थियों इन एलास्टिक कोलेजन की इस क्लास विच आज थोड़ा स्वागत है इस विषय पर डिटेल विच विचार करने तो पहला मैं थोड़े नाल आज दी क्लास के लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स साझे कर लव ऑन कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस टॉपिक लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन इन एलास्टिक कोलेजन डिस्कस इन एलास्टिक कोलेजन in one dimension discuss inelastic collision in two dimensions do bodies darmiyan collision nu is tarah define kita ja sakda hai ki a very short time interval le bodies di mutual interaction hai jis de natije vajon इंटरैक्टिंग बॉडीज़ की एनर्जी और मोमेंटम चेंज हों नेचर तीन प्रकार के कुलेजन होंगे इलास्टिक कुलेजन इन एलास्टिक कुलेजन परफेक्टली इन एलास्टिक कुलेजन अज के इस पाठ में असी इन एलास्टिक कुलेजनस बारे पढ़न जा रहे हैं अ कुलेजन इज सैट टू बी एन इन एलास्टिक कुलेजन इफ मोमेंटम इज कंजर्व while the kinetic energy is not conserved the kinetic energy lost in the collision appears in the form of heat sound or light energy the forces of interaction in an inelastic collision are non conservative in nature most of the collisions between macroscopic bodies are inelastic collisions just have a look at this example जदों किसी बॉल न एक निश्चित उचाई तो सुटिया जाता है तो यह अपनी असल हाइट पर दोबारा पहुँच नहीं पाती इसका मतलब यह होया कि बॉल ने कुछ काइनेटिक एनर्जी लॉस्ट कर दिखती है साधारण तौर पर यह कोलिजन इन एलास्टिक कोलिजन है आफ्टर डिफाइनिंग इट we are now in a position to derive some physical terms related to inelastic collision consider that two cars are moving along a same straight line with velocities u1 and u2 before collision suppose that they collide and continue to move along the same straight line with velocities v1 and v2 then velocity of approach and separation is u1 minus u2 and v2 minus v1 respectively since in an inelastic collision momentum is conserved we have m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 or m2 into whole of v2 minus u2 is equal to m1 into whole of u1 minus v1 as equation 1 as in an inelastic collision some part of kinetic energy is always lost we have half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square as less than half of m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square or half m2 into whole of v2 square minus u2 square is less than half of m1 into whole u1 square minus v1 square as equation 2 now dividing equation 2 by equation 1 we get half m2 into whole of v2 square minus u2 square upon m2 into whole v2 minus u2 is less than half of m1 into whole u1 square minus v1 square upon m1 into whole of u1 minus v1 on solving this we get v2 plus u2 is less than u1 plus v1 or v2 minus v1 is less than u1 minus u2 thus in an inelastic collision the velocity of separation is always less than velocity of approach 
for deriving some physical terms we take help of a term called as coefficient of restitution let us see what is this term with the help of a visualization coefficient of restitution is defined as the ratio of the velocity of separation to the velocity of approach of the colliding bodies it is denoted by small e thus the coefficient of restitution is given by e is equal to v2 minus v1 upon u1 minus u2 the coefficient of restitution plays an important role in deciding the nature of collision now let us see what extent the coefficient of restitution help us in deciding the nature of collision as in elastic collision the velocity of separation is always equal to the velocity of approach meaning that v2 minus v1 is equal to u1 minus u2 which implies e is equal to 1 thus if two bodies are elastic in nature then their coefficient of restitution is equal to 1 as in an inelastic collision v2 minus v1 is less than u1 minus u2 which implies e less than 1 since in an inelastic collision the two bodies possess a non zero velocity of separation therefore e is greater than 0 but less than 1 thus if two bodies are inelastic in nature then their coefficient of restitution is greater than 0 but less than 1 now if two bodies are perfectly inelastic then after collision they stick together that is v2 minus v1 is equal to 0 which implies e is equal to 0 thus if two bodies are perfectly inelastic in nature then their coefficient of restitution is equal to 0 let us now consider inelastic collision in one dimension the collision in which momentum is conserved with some loss in kinetic energy and the colliding bodies continue to move along the same straight line after the collision is called an inelastic collision in one dimension we will now derive a mathematical expression for the given statement consider two vehicles say a and b of masses m1 and m2 moving along the same straight line with velocities u1 and u2 respectively collide with each other and continue moving along the same straight line with velocities v1 and v2 in the same direction the conserved momentum in an inelastic collision means that the total momentum of two balls before and after collision is equal thus we have m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 since the coefficient of restitution is given by e is equal to v2 minus v1 upon u1 minus u2 so v2 is equal to v1 plus e into whole of u1 minus u2 and this implies m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 into whole of v1 plus e whole into u1 minus u2 this implies m1 minus em2 into whole of u1 plus m2 u2 into 1 plus e equal to m1 plus m2 whole into v1 on simplification we get the final velocity of a after collision as v1 equal to m1 minus em2 whole into u1 plus m2 u2 into whole of 1 plus e upon m1 plus m2 
again we have v1 as equal to v2 plus e into whole of u2 minus u1 which implies m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 into whole of v2 plus e into whole of u2 minus u1 plus m2 v2. This implies 1 plus e into m1 u1 plus m2 minus e m1 whole into u2 is equal to m1 plus m2 whole into v2. On simplification, we get the final velocity of b after collision as v2 equal to 1 plus e whole into m1 u1 plus m2 minus e m1 whole into u2 upon m1 plus m2. Kai conditions which ek tuje nal collide karan waliyan bodies elastic nature diyan hondiyan han ja unequal mass diyan ja inna cho koi ek rest te vi ho sakdi hai. Hon asi one dimension which inelastic collision de in a special cases just situations no padan ja rahe haan. Special cases which ho ao sab to pehla two bodies of elastic nature colliding with each other te vichar kar de haan. For this special situation E is equal to 1 which implies the velocity of A after collision is V1 equal to M1 minus M2 whole into U1 plus 2 M2 U2 upon M1 plus M2 and the velocity of B after collision is V2 equal to 2 M1 U1 plus M2 minus M1 whole into U2 upon M1 plus M2. Now, if the two colliding bodies are of perfectly inelastic nature, then we have E equal to 0, which implies V1 is equal to V2 equal to M1 U1 plus M2 U2 upon M1 plus M2. Now, suppose if the two colliding bodies of equal masses are inelastic in nature, then we have M1 equal to M2 equal to M, which implies the velocity of A after collision is V1 equal to M minus EM whole into U1 plus M U2 into 1 plus E upon M plus M which is also equal to 1 minus e whole into u1 plus 1 plus e into u2 by 2 and the velocity of b after collision is v2 equal to 1 plus e whole into m u1 plus m minus em into u2 upon m plus m. This is equal to 1 plus e whole into u1 plus 1 minus e into u2 by 2. And now let's see what happens when two inelastic bodies of unequal masses collide with each other where the second body to be hit is in the state of rest. It means that the initial velocity of the second body which is to be hit is 0. Thus, we have u2 is equal to 0, which implies that the final velocity of A after collision is v1 equal to m1 minus em2 whole into u1 plus m2 into whole of 1 plus e into 0 upon m1 plus m2, which is equal to m1 minus em2 whole into u1 by m1 plus m2 and the final velocity of b after collision is v2 equal to 1 plus e whole into m1 u1 plus m2 minus e m1 whole into 0 upon m1 plus m2 which is equal to 1 plus e whole into m1 u1 upon m1 plus m2. 
Let us now consider a situation where two inelastic bodies of equal masses collide with each other when the second body to be hit is in the state of rest. Then u2 is equal to 0, m1 is equal to m2 which is equal to m, implying that the final velocity of a after collision is v1 equal to m minus em whole into u1 plus m into whole of 1 plus e into 0 upon m plus m which is also equal to 1 minus e whole into u1 by 2 and the final velocity of b after collision is v2 equal to 1 plus e whole into m u1 plus m minus em into 0 upon m plus m which is equal to 1 plus e whole into u1 by 2. Then let's see what happens when the target body say b of mass m2 which is negligible as compared to the body by which it is to be hit say a of mass m1. Here we have m2 as infinitesimally less than m1 implying that m1 minus em2 is equivalent to m1 and m1 plus em2 is equivalent to m1. So during this moment the final velocity of a after collision is v1 equal to m1 minus em2 whole into u1 upon m1 plus m2 or v1 is equal to m1 u1 by m1 which is equal to u1 and the final velocity of b after collision is v2 is equal to m1 into whole of 1 plus e into u1 plus m1 plus m2 and this gives v2 equal to m1 into whole of 1 plus e into u1 by m1 which is equal to 1 plus e whole into u1 and then is the turn of the case when the body which is hitting a target body of negligible mass. Let the mass of the first body say m1 be negligibly smaller than the mass of second body say m2 to which it is to hit means that m1 is infinitesimally small than m2 or m1 minus em2 is equivalent to minus em2 and m1 plus em2 is equivalent to em2. So during this moment the final velocity of a after collision is v1 equal to m1 minus em2 whole into u1 upon m1 plus m2. This implies v1 is equal to minus em2 into u1 by m2 equal to minus eu1 and the final velocity of b after collision is v2 equal to m1 into whole of 1 plus e into u1 upon m1 plus m2. This is equal to m1 into whole of 1 plus e into u1 by m2 which is nearly equal to 0. Now we are going to learn the loss of kinetic energy in an inelastic collision. Consider two vehicles say A and B of masses m1 and m2 moving along the same straight line with velocities u1 and u2 respectively collide with each other and continue moving along the same straight line with velocities v1 and v2 in the same direction. Here the kinetic energy of the two bodies before collision and after collision is kinetic energy initial equal to half of m1 u1 square plus half of m2 u2 square and 
kinetic energy final is equal to half of m1 v1 square plus half of m2 v2 square. Therefore, loss in kinetic energy of the two bodies on collision is delta t equal to half of m1 u1 square plus half of m2 u2 square minus whole of half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square multiplying and dividing on right hand side by m1 plus m2 we get delta t is equal to 1 upon 2 into whole of m1 plus m2 into whole of m1 plus m2 into m1 u1 square plus m2 u2 square minus m1 plus m2 whole into m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square. Here we have m1 plus m2 whole into m1 u1 square plus m2 u2 square equal to m1 square u1 square plus m1 m2 into u2 square plus m1 m2 into u1 square plus m2 square u2 square which is equal to m1 square u1 square plus m2 square u2 square plus m1 m2 into whole of u1 square plus u2 square which is also equal to m1 square u1 square plus m2 square u2 square plus twice m1 m2 u1 u2 plus m1 m2 into whole of u1 square plus u2 square minus twice m1 m2 u1 u2. This is also equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2 whole square plus m1 m2 into u1 minus u2 whole square. Similarly, m1 plus m2 whole into m1 into v1 square plus m2 into v2 square is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 whole square plus m1 m2 into v1 minus v2 whole square. Thus, using the expression for delta t, we get delta t as equal to 1 upon 2 into whole of m1 plus m2 into m1 u1 plus m2 u2 whole square plus m1 m2 into u1 minus u2 whole square minus m1 v1 plus m2 v2 whole square plus m1 m2 into v1 minus v2 whole square. As the coefficient of restitution E is equal to V2 minus V1 upon U1 minus U2, therefore V2 minus V1 is equal to E into whole of U1 minus U2. On squaring both sides, we get V2 minus V1 whole square as equal to E square into U1 minus U2 whole square or v1 minus v2 whole square is equal to e square into u1 minus u2 whole square. According to the law of conservation of linear momentum, we have m1 u1 plus m2 v2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Using this result for delta t, we get delta t as equal to 1 upon 2 into whole of m1 plus m2 whole into m1 u1 plus m2 u2 whole square plus m1 m2 into u1 minus u2 whole square minus m1 u1 plus m2 u2 whole square plus m1 m2 into e square into u1 minus u2 whole square. On simplifying this expression, we get the loss of kinetic energy during an elastic or perfectly inelastic collision of two bodies as delta t equal to m1 m2 into whole of 1 minus e square into u1 minus u2 whole square by 2 into m1 plus m2. Hon asi elastic collision the case which loss of kinetic energy the kuch special cases no study karange. आओ सब तो पहला आपस विच कोलाइड कर रही हैं इलास्टिक नेचर दिया टू बॉडीज़ पे डिस्कशन करते हैं फॉर विच 
we have E is equal to 1. Since the loss of kinetic energy during collision of two bodies is delta T equal to m1 m2 into whole of 1 minus E square into u1 minus u2 whole square upon 2 into whole of m1 plus m2. This implies delta T is equal to m1 m2 into whole of 1 minus 1 square into u1 minus u2 whole square upon twice m1 plus m2 which is equal to 0. Hence, there is no loss of kinetic energy during the collision of two elastic bodies. Let us now consider that the two colliding bodies are of perfectly inelastic nature. Then we have E is equal to 0. Therefore, delta T is equal to m1 m2 into 1 minus 0 into u1 minus u2 whole square upon 2 into whole of m1 plus m2 which is equal to m1 m2 into u1 minus u2 whole square upon twice into whole of m1 plus m2. Now let's see what will happen when two perfectly inelastic bodies of unequal masses collide with each other when the second body to be hit is in the state of rest. Now if the target body is at rest then E is equal to 0 and U2 is also equal to 0. This implies the loss of kinetic energy delta T is equal to m1 m2 into whole of 1 minus 0 into u1 minus 0 whole square by 2 into m1 plus m2 which is equal to m1 m2 into u1 square by 2 into m1 plus m2. O collision just which do we momentum conserve on a te kinetic energy destroy ho gai ho ve the collision to baad vastua alag alag directions which gati kar diya ho us no two dimensional inelastic collision kende han is no ek video vek ke samajhte han man lo two inelastic objects a ate b jina da mass m1 ate m2 hai gram var velocities u1 ate u2 de naal use straight line vich move kar rahiya han je u1 u2 to zyada hove ta dove bodies collide karan giya collision de baad dove bodies a ate b jo ke velocities v1 ate v2 naal move kar rahiya han ta a bodies incident direction say x axis naal angles theta ate phi banaundiya han here applying the law of conservation of momentum along x axis and y axis respectively we can say m1 u1 cos theta plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 plus m2 whole into v cos phi and m1 u1 sin theta is equal to m1 plus m2 whole into v sin phi. The three parameters that is v, theta and phi are connected by the given equations. Therefore, by experimentally measuring the value of theta, the values of v and phi can be calculated. I will now like to quickly summarize all that we have learned so far. Inelastic collision is the collision in which the momentum is conserved while some part of kinetic energy of the system is lost. The coefficient of restitution E is defined as the ratio of the velocity of separation to the velocity of approach of the colliding bodies. Before concluding this class finally for today, get ready to answer some of my questions. 
the first question goes like this what is inelastic collision and the answer to this is inelastic collision is the collision in which the momentum is conserved while some part of kinetic energy of the system is lost look at the second question define coefficient of restitution the definition says the coefficient of restitution e is defined as the ratio of the velocity of separation to the velocity of approach of the colliding bodies मैनू पूरा यकीन है कि तुम अज का यह लैसन पूरे ध्यान न सुनिया होगा इस पूरा लाभ लिया होगा आस है कि तुम पूछे गए सवालों के उत्तर चंकी तरह जान गए हो ध्यान देने धनवाद अगली क्लास में फिर मिलेंगे